Welcome back to the Overwatch Pacific Championship Season 2 Qualifiers. I'm Kevin Everett Walker, joined with the still Matt Pixie Carroll as we're about to head into match number two of the evening. Libelant Supreme from Japan take on Team Ariot from Korea. And this is going to be a bit of an interesting one once again because Team Ariot are a very, very interesting looking team. Uh, one way to describe yeah, it. Yeah, tempted to do the full breakdown, but let's uh, before we give them too much airtime, let's also mention, of course, Libelant, our uh, team that exists as well, and that is going to be yeah. their opponent. And, and actually, Fair in yeah. kind of a similar spot, because there is a lot of extremely amazing talent, and uh, much like is the case with Ardian, we don't have too much um, to go off in terms of the teams and their recent performances, yeah. but in terms of the individual players, there is a lot to talk about here. All right, well, let's get into it, because we're here going to start with Ardian. From Korea, Erster. Some of these names will start to ring a bell, and the reason they ring a bell is because we have four ex Mighty AOED players from Apex Republic is their new addition to this team that has not played professionally for any team. So he is the only one on the entire audience squad that hasn't been a professional player in Korea. DM from Mighty AOD as well. And they'll be joined by Day Fly at the end from Afrika Freaks Blue. Yeah, so this is really interesting. And uh, like you said, that's actually most of one of the teams from Apex, plus an extra member from a separate Apex team. And then uh, you mentioned as well Republic, this sort of pickup. So a uh, lot of questions around Republic specifically, and I'm actually really excited to see how he plays better uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with those four players in the team they were on uh in the most recent apex tournament they did go out of their group but that was the group mm -hmm. with lunatic high uh and Kondru pandera and rogue. and rogue so arguably the group of death and yep. they actually took a game off Kondru pantera so the bulk of that team is now on audience here however is their opponent's japanese squad and uh, Daraton, I think I said that correctly, is he, as well as Jasper, who we'll see later on, are a part of the Japanese national squad representing Japan at the World Cup. So we're going to see them later on as well. So Liberal and Supreme, for the people that don't know, are one of the top, if not the best, Japanese Overwatch team. And they're generally considered to be in that number one spot or fighting for that number one spot with other yeah. teams like USG, Iridata, and also Detonator Gold back in the day as well. So that's the thing, as much as we have all that to say about Ardeon, for this team specifically, they have actually been playing together a little bit recently and all reports do seem to point to them being this really strong, almost kind of upstart team that's come a little bit out of nowhere despite the individual talent that is on it. So. Look, it's going to be a really tough test for them, I feel, but what we're going to get here is a really strong sound out of how close yeah. or indeed how far apart these two teams are. I do expect this to be a tight matchup in some yeah. ways, and whichever team uh, comes out on top of it can certainly be pleased with that, but the team that comes out the bottom end of this, uh, provided it's a close showing, can actually still feel quite confident again to the loser's bracket. And one additional sort of insight I might give for Team Ardient is if you notice there was a player called Animo there. Animo is the renamed, uh, is, is the new ID or alias for mm -hmm. the player no, previously known as Sleep from uh, Team Mighty AOD. So Sleep renamed himself to Animo. So if you're mm -hmm. wondering who Animo was, that's who he is. He is a fourth member yeah. coming out from Mighty AOD that is joining the Ardian squad. So a lot of, this is now kind of, I would say the first time uh, into the OPC where we've got um, a really well-built experienced team yep. from another competition, a very high-level competition with very with, with some of the best teams in the world. And for the first time, we're getting yep. a little bit of taste of what that feels like now into the OPC. So um, yeah. we're expecting, I, I would say, you know, hi, hypothetically, or, well, you know, the prediction should be that Ardian are the strongest team in the qualifiers and if any team is expected to make it to season two it's this team yeah but certainly you know the things said about libelin do still ring true there and that's the thing there is just a little bit more recent data on them it's hard to say comparatively uh, how these two teams stack up against one another but with all things pointing towards libelin being uh, a potential surprise factor here look this is exactly the kind of match where they can show what their strengths are, where they can have that kind of surprise factor, because like you said, Ardient really are coming into this as the favorites. And also in that vein as well, it's just this interesting quirk, of course, of Overwatch right now is a lot of the teams, uh, not just here, but in the OPC as well, had actually played in previous tournaments. You know, there were established teams that did exist, some more so than others, but Ultimately, none of them had played in a tournament like Apex until they actually played in the OPC. And a lot of those teams learned and grew from mm -hmm. that. Ardient are a team coming into this, having already learned and grown from that sort of tournament. And yeah. that's the strength of the carry. Yeah, absolutely. Ardient are coming in with so much built-up experience 
from Apex that these these other teams, I'm, I'm not going to speak about OPC as a whole, but even just in the qualifier, don't really have Dinner to Korea, brand new team, Talent, brand new team, and also Liberland Supreme, while not a brand new team, come in as a team that do not have the professional experience that Arty and do, and we're going to get into Lee Jung again as the standard open and control map of the first round. Yeah, and uh, with that, we're seeing some fairly standard lineups from these two. I don't believe that's going to be a real Hanzo. Indeed, no, it's not. It will be the Genji. <laughs> I'm excited. I've never seen RDM play in. Look, they were undefeated in the online qualify, and they may get still go undefeated now. <coughs> Excuse me there. Ha. And yeah, undefeated is actually a really interesting point. Of course, because they went undefeated, it's really hard to say how the teams that they defeated would otherwise match up against them, but already a strong opening as they pick off Pepper. Thank you for that one, Peter Piper. And Ursta, a little bit too deep, actually will get punished for that one. So Ardian may need to be careful with uh, how they overextend here. Need to back off before, um, sorry, Liberland Supreme get a bit too aggressive themselves. But picking off, say, um, Keisuke rather and getting the dive onto Selene should keep them uh, nicely poised here. As long as they don't lose Republic and that is... Indeed looking to be the case here is now actually Liverland would have to get a bit too aggressive if they really wanted to convert here. And uh, they're actually opting to kind of do that. They haven't really committed to uh, the retreat just yet. And that means Arty and just kind of get the ground and the kills. And Supreme really turned on the gas towards the final moments where they said, look, the cap is about to actually open up here. Arty and started well with a, a very strong opening. DM got the first kill, got responded with Ursa going down on the Supreme. So that's enough for us to try and make it in. Unfortunately, not enough uh, Arty and do get the first cap over and still holding on very aggressive ground. Yeah extremely aggressive defense coming out of them and Thorn can't making it work. He does trade his life for it, but Erster goes off, so it doesn't really matter. They're getting the opening damage for these high DPS. Oh, uh, and, going off. Oh, wow. These flankers to convert the kills out, and this is really, really nicely balanced by Ardian. And actually for Supreme, they, they have the ability to come back here because ultimates do come online for both teams. The good thing for like, Liberal and Supreme is they get these ultimates, but actually for Ardian, they won the last fight without using anything whatsoever. They're being so well calculated in terms of the economy of this game so far. Ardian gonna pull up again, I would say another even 20%, 30% before we see anything real from Supreme. Yeah, certainly just based on the ultimates, and they're already going aggressive themselves. That forces out the Transcendence, and Hotate, he's so low, he's not really gonna be able to use his Dragon Blade just yet, so they've already forced out those ultimates. They can now commit their own to get aggressive as Liberal and Supreme are committing theirs and not finding anything for it because Ardian, they're the ones with more pressure on. Liberal and Supreme are using the ultimates to try and hold on in the fight. They finally get some trade backs onto Thorncut's mech, but that's all they're going to get in this entire fight. Yeah, really rough, and you see Supreme really committed there. They really gave it the all. Republic actually came out really massive. He got the opening two kills, even cleans up a couple of kills at the end. We're getting such huge progress, and Ardian is still sitting on a number of ultimates. They're still sitting on the ability to swing the fight with the Pulse Bomb, sitting on the ability to stall out with Republic as well. For Supreme, I mean, they're struggling to even contest. We're about to hit into 90%. Yeah, absolutely. You're they're just struggling is the way to put it, right? It's like they're just not prepared for how aggressive Ardian are playing. And also, Ardian aren't exactly showing any cracks in the armor here. They're not really giving Liberland any ins either. And that's a team wipe before the Ouch. point had even ticked over. They were miles away from it as well. Yeah. Ouch, indeed. Speaking you know, we were saying, we were saying, uh, of course, SGDQ is on right now. We were saying we wonder if we wondered if we were going to see any of these teams try and speed run the other. But yeah, we were saying like, what, what, what's 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 being speed run right now? Then yeah. it's just like, well, I think uh, Team Ardia might yeah. look to speed run Liberal and Supreme if they can. Uh... And you mentioned you mentioned <laughs> Liberal and Supreme are not prepared for Team Ardia. I don't know if OPC are prepared for Team Ardia. By They're the looks all... of that, <laughs> by the looks of that, not only by the looks of that, but by the fact that you know we talk about the experience that Ardia bring into this, and it does show. You know, even with new players coming in like Republic. Kind of the question was, how good is Republic going to be? How does he fit into the synergy of the team? Well, so far, looks like pretty good. And that's the thing, right? Without wanting to get too ahead of ourselves, to be completely honest, it's one thing to have this uh, promotion relegation tournament, to have the qualifiers, and just have, you know, two new teams come in and replace the likes of Sun Sister and Detonator Gold, you know? And those were two teams that were at the bottom of the standings and stayed at the bottom of the standings until the very end. Really, uh -huh. the only wins they could often get were against each other. So. It's one thing to have two teams come in and replace them. It's another thing to have two teams come in and, you know, push the likes of those middle ground teams, you know, the fireball, matchy, Hong Kong attitude. It would be another thing altogether and something I really hope we do see because this is now suddenly an open qualifier, whereas the initial OPC was invite only. It is very likely that we will get a team that comes in and really pushes the AHQs, the blanks, the flash wolveses of the OPC. Wolveses. The wolveses. <laughs> yeah, but in all seriousness, True. that is 
absolutely what we're potentially looking at here with a team like Ardient, yeah. and this is them, I feel, trying to show that they are that team. And, and, and you know, I have, I have exchanged some words with, you know, teams in that upper upper bracket blank in particular. Can you say exchange playoffs. like you swapped them? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, I'll, I'll give, I'll you, give the, you a word, yeah. you will give them the next word. I'll give you but, and if you give me but. But Ardient is a well-respected team from even among the current playoffs level mm -hmm. teams in the OPC. So as soon as Ardient did come in, and I think we have a, a couple of problems here, technical from the player side of things, so hopefully that'll get fixed up pretty soon. But Ardian, as soon as people knew who this team was, because they signed up as as a team where, you know, you don't know who the players are, it's just called Team Ardian, you're thinking, who are these guys? And suddenly, yeah, as never soon heard as you realize who was playing on this team, you're like, oh. Yeah, you see the names that, come up, and also that because is, that some is of them- on the team. And that's, you know, that's when, if your your team's like Blank, Flash, Wars, and HQ, you're suddenly realizing, that's quite scary to have this kind of team come mm -hmm. in, but at the same time, it's quite exciting. Like you said, it does push everyone else up. It forces yes. everyone else to get better. And I would actually think right now, Team Ardient, they look fantastic. I think they would go, they're, they're a team that would, if you stuck them into OPC right now, they would be a team pushing playoffs. But I wouldn't be convinced so far if they would just be the number one team outright. I think Flash Wolves in so, particular look like an absolute dominant team, even against the likes of what we are seeing on Ardian so far. So for Ardian, it pushes that middle range up and really makes the players' teams improve even beyond what they have got. And that's the thing that would be interesting. Um, look, assuming that this is a consistent thing for Ardian, that we haven't just seen some one-off fluke, honestly, that was incredibly strong Overwatch. It is up to Livalent to rise to the occasion. Assuming Ardian were in that kind of situation in, you know, being in OPC Season 2, the reality is Flash Wolves are already pushing the OPC teams forward. We were seeing that towards the end of Season 1 and indeed uh, in that finals itself. If you had another team that's kind of doing that from the bottom end of that top, top three, like what Hong Kong Attitude was starting to do to the later halves of the tournament, yeah. you get some really interesting plays. You get a much more dynamic field and that is, like you said, exciting. In fact, it is exactly what these players should want uh, in terms of the teams already in the OPC because good, tight, close competition makes for good, tight team play, great matches, and frankly improves everyone's stand. And by the way, if you remember the final standings coming up from OPC in, in the first season, right at the end there, Fiebel took down Hong Kong Attitude while being technically now the lowest ranked team based on pure rankings. Realistically, Machi, Hong Kong Attitude, and Fireball, these are all teams that are now capable of taking games off each other. Fireball now yeah. recently rebranded as Mega. We'll hopefully hear an announcement about that very soon in the coming weeks, uh, you know, with, with the new team name and whatnot. Um, Fireball, and it kind of thematically, it's, it's kind of really makes sense because they do feel like a bit of a new team, a re rejuvenated team. Now, with Theta One in the, in the mix as well, Fireball have really moved themselves up. So. The, the, the competition across the board, I would like to say, have, has massively gone up. When you consider, oh, the lowest ranked teams in your competition are like Fireball and Machi. Well, that's actually really yeah. good. That's insane. Yeah. It's terrifying. And that's the thing as well. It's actually already in the OBC. The field has got a lot closer. It has got a lot more dynamic and interesting. And even before we knew what teams were going to be in this tournament, we were talking about how exciting it was going to be to have new entrants into that mix. Seeing what some of these entrants may be because of the teams playing tonight, two will make it in. I'm now more excited than ever for season two. Absolutely, as we have, of course, a course to match right into Night Markets. DM going deep as ever. Doesn't get an opening pick for the mech on Jasper. That's already gone. Very, very huge for them, actually. Really means they are struggling to defend really any of these supports. And look, shredded. Yeah, Ardian already have all the ground here to play with. They've got so much room to maneuver. It's like their field and you're just playing in it. Yeah, like, I think it's it's really interesting that the tanks are the first ones down for. Uh, for Libelin Supreme. Usually in a lot of these pickups, you see the Zenyatta is gone, the Lucias are down, Soldiers are gone. But Ardia, they just rock in there. Goodbye Diva Mech, goodbye Winston, and who else is there to this? Target selection has been absolutely phenomenal. And I'll be honest, this is something that they have probably carried in from Apex. One of the tournaments that has managed to handle and adapt to the Diva Strong meta very, Apex very well. And once again, doing the same. If they can't kill the Diva, they're happy to just go past Jasper and suddenly he finds himself, you know, up a creek without a paddle. No supports, no DPS to follow up on the plays he's making. Oh, and suddenly is, he's the last man alive. This is a spawn camp now just happening. We've already got the camp over. Ultimates are starting to build up as well. Liberal and Supreme, they need a bit of time to get these ultimates up themselves. Pepper's going to get the Pulse Swarm. I actually don't want to see him use it here. Seeing him use it here, they would have to play into a bevy of Ardian, um, Ardian to 
um, ultimate. So maybe that's actually good. There's a 50-50 there. You want to bait out the ultimates on Ardia, but you also want to save your own. And you don't want to get your Zenyatta stuck, which is exactly what happens there as Erster goes deep as Animo. well. And Animo. anyone is even contesting here. This is absolutely phenomenal. That was three ultimates committed, but it was the six kills. The gong just short of sounding there. Actually, it does sound. There we go. I actually think that was uh, decently well played by Liberland Supreme, all things considered, because your goal there was to bleed out ultimates <laughs> from Ardia. Your goal there was to build your own. You've completed both on the other you completed on both fronts and actually for Animo, I think you could have kept the sound barrier there. That was a little bit greedy. Potentially, yeah. I think they were at least giving respect to the fact that they were diving into a very small room that Liberland were actually in. But this time, they oh, haven't to do it and get a kill off the top of it. And oh, closing out on Kasuke as well as, uh, honestly, once again, Liberland are just really struggling to get through this one. Once again, they are holding on to ultimates and baiting them out of Ardian. Yeah. So if they can fully retreat here without losing any more members, they will get one last fight, but they're really going to have to leg it. Well, that's kind of the problem. And Erst is trying to stop that from happening. Already getting aggressive oh, on the Kasuki. No. Jasper takes a dive, the and now they're using spawn. ulting in spawn. Yeah, they're not anywhere near the point. They're dropping off the edge of the map, and they get absolutely demolished. There's a really, you know, one thing to consider about this game is most of the time, you do not want to be a team sitting on six, six ultimates. The only time being on six ultimates is comfortable is if you're defending. So on control, that's when you have the cap already. On every other map, that's when you're the defensive team. Sitting on six ult, it's cool. You want the other team to come into you, you're really comfortable. But other times, if you're attacking into the other team, sitting on six ults means you've not had any fights where you could have had impact. You haven't had any fights where you can actually engage. You lose so much progress. In the case of Liberal and Supreme just then, they were sitting on six ults at about 80%, and they they still couldn't find a fight. By the time they use their ultimates, they're using them in spawn and they couldn't even touch the cap. It's a real disaster. And the reality is, it's not like you can even just use all six of them to win a fight because then you still have to hold on to the point and the other team is going to have ultimates charged up in that fight when you use yours. You have to really choose what you do and don't use. It is hard enough to do. It's worse if you're in that spot. And once again, Ardian, this time Dayfly does go down early to Hotate, but honestly, no skin off their noses, they just get aggressive onto the backliners anyway. Now picking off Dirton. Wow. Yeah, both the tanks going down. Dirton had no chance there. And you know, it's it's when Ardia want to kill something, they just go down. The good news is Liberland Supreme are able to get a couple of trades off the back. So despite losing their entire team or most of their team, the fact that they can pick up something means they will get a little bit of ult charge. It gives them the opportunity to find a pickup. The biggest thing for Supreme is, can we get a pickup? Can we get enough of a trade that we can turn that into a winnable fight? Because so far for the entire Legion series, Supreme have not won a single fight. Not at all. They've barely even gone even in fights, which is pretty disastrous. That's right. Yeah, that is a good way to start going even by opening up on Dayfly. But once again, they're just being aggressed on the backside. And, and now, unfortunately, low. Selene is not going to be able to follow up. <laughs> DM, maybe a little bit... Uh, a DM with the BM, I suppose I should say. Uh, but that's actually going to oh, give Liberland a huge opening, funnily enough, by not killing off Selene. He's able to join his team, and that gives Hotade the opportunity to go aggressive. Now, DM uh, respawning with his ultimate available and looking quite the fool for that one, because Liberland will, for the first time this series so far, actually secure a fight and secure the point. Yeah, so for Liberland Supreme, it's like they've, they've spent the entire high noon duel just trying to get their bullets into their gun, and they finally fired their first shot. It does connect, so they got to connect all the other shots as well. So, Liberal and Supreme, they need to be able to find these pickups. They have now, they're getting more and more pickups every single fight. They are adapting, and that's a good sign, but have they now adapted too late because we're already the third yeah. Apple League They've jump. got the ultimates, but honestly, Ardian had the ultimates to pick them apart as well, and that's exactly what they do. Open up onto Kasuki, means Liberal and Supreme have to use the Transcendence, and between that and the self destruct sword, they already have self destruct finds nothing as DM closes on Selene. And again, now Ardian are just absolutely rolling through Liberal and Supreme once again. Dirton once again able to commit an ultimate, but now suddenly Liberland, look, they've already lost that fight despite the ult. It'll buy some more time on the point, but they've not got anything for the next fight, and Ardian have actually held on to some ultimates. They're holding on to, yeah, Ardian are definitely holding on to ultimates here, and Liberland Supreme, they've actually managed to get a decent amount of progress, so that was a fairly late-ish kind of cap, considering how, I would say, dominant Ardian were in that fight, in that, the last engagement, they got a decent number of kills, but they couldn't actually cap over in a decent amount of time. So for Liberal and Supreme, now that they've all respawned, Ardian don't get away with much of a progress advantage, and that's a lot to play. 
and already Deraten is just so pressured every single time he dives in. At last DM going down again to Selene, and a good stick on the Dayfly. So this is once again an opening for Liberland, and uh, a well-made one as well. They need to be careful not to overextend though as they pile onto the point. Unfortunately, that is exactly what happens as Selene and Deraten get picked off. Now Antari commits this late, uh, but it's very late. And yeah, optimistic is one way to phrase it there, because he gets cut down where he stands, despite being the one with the sword out. Ardian, they've held onto the point as it is, and even if Liberland were to get it back over, Ardian would be one fight away from just winning the first match all together, and even oh, then, Liberland are actually not even sound the point. The few members of Ardian that were left alive had it on complete lockdown, sound barrier for style points, oh, and DM finally gets his revenge onto Selene as they secure the third one. It's not quite the most optimized speed run, but certainly uh, it's got it for a world it's record. Like, it's like the one where you had to reload once, and they're like, oops, I missed that jump, yep. I better go back to the checkpoint. But Just, re just yeah, reset the whole run. Tell you what, actually, in a way, speedruns in Overwatch are a thing, because if you remember, in our finals, actually, um, Blank set a, a record for true, yeah. capping Hanamura in a land setting, so they've actually got the fastest time for doing that. So there you go, speedrunning in Overwatch isn't just to me. And by the way, Animo got a play of the game without getting a single kill or anything. He did a sound barrier. <laughs> The one that I actually said was kind of like 50-50 for me. I was like, maybe he doesn't really need that. I sort of think that he was, does. That was the one. Because, <laughs> look, Ursa just cut everyone up anyway. And Ursa, you see on the kill feed, Ursa just kills everyone. And Animo is like, yep, I'm sitting I, here. I helped, yep. And I got to play the game for it. That was my barrier. <laughs> yeah. It was his barrier that uh, kept the Genji alive. I don't know, saved them from all that sound. But look, wow. What an opening from Team Ardian. Like, that was close to a slam dunk. In fact, if it hadn't have been for that one fight that Liverland won, which I'm going to be honest, there's no nice way to say it. They won off the back of DM stopping to emote rather than securing a kill, which was- Was that true? Hubris. Yeah, he- I didn't, yeah, I didn't catch it. He died, I... he died to Selene, okay. and immediately off the back of that, Selene was actually able to join the fight, whereas previously he had actually not. They'd kept him cut off from his team the whole time. All and right. that's that's a really rough situation right, well, for Liblet, man. Well, we're gonna have to pause the speed run just a little bit here. So if you want to break a world record, maybe not today, because we are gonna head into a short break before we resume into map number two. It will of course be Liberland Supreme's pick on the hybrid as they have lost the initial map on through. What are they gonna do? How are they gonna come back? All that and more right after this. Okay, welcome back to the OPC Season 2 Qualifiers. We're about to head into map number two of our second match of the evening between Team Ardient and Liberland Supreme. And currently, Team Ardient look like they cannot be stopped. Yeah, that's one way to put it. Uh, they were briefly, I won't even say stalled. Interrupted. Yeah, interrupted is a good way to put it. They were briefly Distracted. interrupted. <laughs> yeah. Inconvenienced. Like, booking it down the highway, like, oh, was that a deer? All right, what's ahead of me? Like, <laughs> that's, that's what that honestly oh, felt man. like. They absolutely flattened their opponents, Liberal and Supreme, on Lijiang Tower. But I will also be honest and say Control is a very different game mode to the other three. So it could just be that they are mm -hmm. incredibly strong in Control. Look, there is still a oh, lot of space. Yeah, there is still a lot of space for Liberty, uh, sorry, Liberland to show where their strengths lie in the rest of the series because it is a best of five and there are strengths within Liberland. So let's see now in hybrid with their yeah. pick if they can actually take it to Ardian. Actually, especially with the current uh, map pick kind of format, I, I don't know if this is gonna, I, I assume this will not persist on through to actual season two, but the way it works in the qualifier at least is there are no home and, a side, home and away sides. So both teams have a set standard of a, of a control map they start with and then the loser picks every map from then onwards. So mm -hmm. if you're Liberal and Supreme right now, you're not gonna be in a situation when you get to Assault and then it's Ardian's pick again. You're gonna get the pick if you lose again. Yeah. So, so for, for, for Liberal and Supreme, you're always gonna get to pick your best maps. Yeah, yeah, well, I, I'm, unless you just lose them all. I mean, then, then are they really your best or are they Ardian's best? But <laughs> in oh, any yeah, case, their pick is gonna be King's Row. Uh, this is honestly not too surprising, actually. I, this is just standard territory. This is where a lot of teams just, just go because it's fairly it's safe. Stick. Exactly, it's a measuring stick is a good way to put it because you you know that both teams are going to be well practiced on it. When you go somewhere like Numbani or Hollywood, yeah. maybe they're actually like really great. Maybe that is actually their map. So uh, this is Liberlin actually not going ahead and just picking their own map. They're just going, all right, neutral territory. Let's see how they play hybrid now that we've seen how they play control. Let's figure out how we can crack the armor. Exactly, and this is the Overwatch litmus test of, of sorts as well. So for Team Ardient, I'd like to see what their strengths on the hybrids are because you do need a little bit more finesse in terms of the macro play. We've seen their 
you know, how to play aggressive. We've seen the individual mechanics start to really shine. We've seen some good decision making, but how far can you take that? Also for Liberal and Supreme, now you've gone for a little bit more of a, you know, a slower pace sort of game mode. Now we're going to hybrid versus control. Is that going to favor you a little bit better? It's, it's a lot of questions to be asked about how Liberal and Supreme can actually get themselves back into this game because when we did see Lee Chung Tower, yes, they lost, but towards the end, they started to adapt a little bit. They started to push back. Kind of the good analogy is it's like a it's like you're having a duel and you're still you're still loading your bullets and they're now only just firing. And the only problem with that is like if you get shot while you're loading. But and they have been <laughs> shot a couple times already. Yeah, so it's, they're just miraculously surviving all of these bullets that are connecting. But in, in a sense, you're not you're not wrong. And the, the thing that I feel is going to really be important here is indeed that adaptation. Uh, the sense I get is that it is going to be quite a task to do that, but. In a way, they have two more maps to do that on, two yeah. more games to do that on, before it's really do or die. And like you said, towards the end of Control, we were starting, uh, they were, if not executing, then at least figuring out what it was Ardent were doing that was working so well. And if they can actually then just carry what they've learned now through onto King's Row and uh, actually execute on what they needed to counter it, which I feel is actually very much within the grasp of this team, then we could really see a bit of a change up. Well, the really the factor for Supreme to consider here is the weakness of Ardient is actually in them playing quite well because the better Ardient play, the more reckless they get. Yeah. You know, the more overconfident they may become, and that's when they have room to be punished. And for, emoting in front of and Zenyatta's. And for a team like Supreme, that's when you can take advantage. You say, okay, this player is overextended now. He's playing far too greedy. They're making decisions that they should not be really making here. They're trying to play far too, you know, they're playing so overconfident that they're putting themselves in a place where they can now lose. And for Supreme, that's where you want to be to suddenly take back the game. And I would actually say as well, uh, Ardient were playing way, way, way too aggressively. And like I say that in the absolute extreme, you know, like we had Winston's just not retreating when you know any team would do so because it was safer. They were getting away with it and getting a kill, but it was so very punishable. So there are a lot of ways to absolutely take out Ardient here. And oh from God. Ardient on their side of things, I want to see them right play now. more disciplined. Well, whichever team this is, they're having a great time just following the direct line. <laughs> Don't walk off, guys. Follow the Reinhardt. <laughs> Don't get off the line. Oh, Diva failed. Diva. Every time. Uh, there is a Reinhardt into play, though, and I'm assuming we're staying on to the Reinhardt. It could be wrong. No, okay, no, he looks yeah, like he's changing. A, yeah, so they went to the end a of the line and he charged not, all the way back. The 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 a man can, uh, can dream. That was fun. That was entertaining. Uh, thank you very much for that. We'll find out what team that was in a moment. Ah, it was Ardigans. There we go. A team okay. apparently full of characters. And by the way, they will learn you, emote in front of Zenyatta. And by the way, when you get to pick the map, I, I'm feeling like 90% certain about this. You also choose the starting side, yeah. so Liberal and Supreme opting to attack first here. I find this very, very interesting. Uh, certainly, if they if they get first held and then Ardian cap, then it would very much look like a speedrun. But uh, more importantly, I think it speaks to a confidence that they feel... Uh, when Ardian don't have the opportunity to go aggressive, they may feel that they actually can pick them apart and see how they execute. Well, they are definitely testing the waters here. And a good sort of positioning around the sides here, making sure they get the, all the flanks sort of covered. They are now backing off, so good counter attack from Ardian to be able to do that. Yeah, and that is exactly what it is. It's a counter attack as DM goes deep on it. And now Hatate is going to get pressured out a little bit. As Honestly, they just open up. Hatate does dash in to convert one, uh, but gonna have to just back straight out because Esther has uh, got just as many conversions himself. Yeah man, Hatare Hatare, that didn't really matter at the end of the day. Supreme didn't really get enough ground whatsoever, they didn't really get enough picks. Ardian sort of gave a little bit of room to work with for Supreme and as soon as Supreme pushed, Ardian pushed back far stronger. That was, I, I just thought, uh, that was a little bit unfortunate for Supreme. And now looking to get aggressive once again, this time kind of routing on the backside and it's working out a little bit better for them. They need to be coming onto this Jasper here. They try and get the drop on Republic, but uh, has been reacted to now by Ardient as they're able to wheel back around, but they're not quite comfortable yet as the aggression gets dropped in. They're trying to convert like onto neck. Thorncut, finally get one through as, yeah, Mech indeed. That's the open up now for Esther. Hotate will have his own soon, but if Esther converts too many, it may not matter. And he gets Deriton as well. Oh, the what a wow. Indeed. And despite de-mecking Thorncut, wow, Ursta just putting the team on his back. Oh, ouch. Have a nap, Diva. It is past your bedtime. <laughs> they fly nailing that one. And Arianta, this is about as economic as you can get. And Ursta only really brought out the Dragon Blade because, look, 
Arya lost something there. They lost a mech. They didn't even lose Thorn Thorncut. They just lost a mech, and that was enough to say, okay, maybe we should use an ultimate here. Ursa went in with Dragon Blade, cleaned up everything, even got kills after the Dragon Blade. Deflex, you name it. Even the sleep at the end from Dayflight, everything is just hitting his time. Well, again, now going on the aggressive here. Selene is already using the Transcendence to so they can try and convert kills, but they're struggling again as Kesuke gets picked off once nice again. Nice Wow. This is absolutely nuts from Ardian. It's like, even when LS are the ones pulling the trigger, it's like Ardian grabbed the barrel and, like, turn it back around to point at Liveland. I'm pretty sure this is like Neo in the first Matrix when he gets shot by all the agents, but then he raises his hand and all the bullets just stop him here, picks them out. Oh, agents. <laughs> right. <laughs> He said agents. Okay. Yeah, well, look, level and Supreme, yeah, they're going to keep trying to go on this one because they do actually the respawns in Hotate. Only finding one with the Dragon Blade is very unfortunate. Republic kind of putting the team into disarray as they try to execute themselves. Now, getting aggressive on the point. They really need to convert a few here because actually, Arctic. Oh no, Ursa got another Dragon Blade. Butter some toast. That is actually a lot of ultimates used by Ardian, so all things considered, yeah, we are under 60 seconds here. Ardian have used everything, so Liberal and Supreme, they've waited for a very long time. This kind of feels like we're back on Lee Jung, where there are on about six ultimates. Let's just hope they don't have to use the ultimates in spawn, because they are ahead, and this is their best chance to win. Now, looking to get very aggressive. They really need to get a lot of... Yeah, there we go. That is a good way to start. And pressuring Erster, that's what they needed. They need this Pulse Bomb to pay dividends as well because it's all they've already got left to secure the fight. So they need to take out Thorncard here as well. Does not quite connect the Pulse Bomb and suddenly Ardian are answering back again somehow. Now, Pepper getting pressured out. How are they doing this? They just can't even get it in here. It's not even one guy going off. It's just the whole team, the few members they have left. I mean, it's absolutely insane when Thorncut loses mech, goes into Baby Diva form, and out duels Pepper on a Tracer as a Baby Diva. Uh, that just says a lot. It's nuts. Now DM aggressive. Pulse Bomb out. Double kill secured. And suddenly Liberland going on with only a few members. And those few members are losing their lives. Desperately trying to get onto this point. Not even a third for themselves as the last member gets destroyed where they stand. And Ardient poised to speedrun Liberland. I don't know where Flash Wolves are right now, but if they're anywhere near Taipei, they need to get to the East Stadium and play these guys immediately. <laughs> I was going to say, wherever they are, they need to be taking notes, man, because they may have this some is, stiff competition. This is when you get that light out on top of a tower and you shine the Flash Wolves logo into the dark sky, yeah. and suddenly <laughs> Zonda is summoned with the rest of the team. It's Zonda and five Robin Hoods. Sorry, Rob, five Robins. Zonda plus five Robins on the team just show up. <laughs> Zonda and his five Wolves. <laughs> the Flash Wolves logo in the sky, yeah, that's exactly what it is, yeah. That's what you need right now. Commissioner Dayfly is, uh... It's Commissioner Gumba. <laughs> Commissioner <laughs> Gumba. Commissioner Gumba <laughs> summons on the I need you. What do you need me for? And Kiki can be Batgirl. Okay. I don't sure. know why. I just... Well, it's a shame, I, I don't know, there's, there's got a... I feel like if they were all playing soldier, it'd be great because they're like, get these jokers off my point. I'm back in the fight. That was tough. Oh, that man. was tough. I... That was... And you know what else may be tough here is... Uh, I've what, never noticed what this may be tough actually. is... Yeah. Have you noticed no, this in, you, you, you use it in Uprising. Yeah, I know, but it just didn't look like this. Yeah. This is like just a part of King's Row that no one has any need to go to. It's true. Just like the subways, like you spawn in the subway, but otherwise... Yeah, you never go back you'd there. You never go there, so... There's just cars here. There's just cars. And they're on. They're, they're on. They're, they're wasting battery here. This is some you know, poor person is going to go back and they won't be able to start their car. You know, London uh, is uh, one of the few cities where the taxi service isn't getting pressured out by Uber because the taxi drivers, um, their navigation, mental navigation, is better than GPS. Because in order to be a certified London taxi driver, you must have oh, yeah, I've heard about the this. knowledge. And the knowledge is you must you must be able to be told two addresses and immediately know the fastest route between the two, taking into account things like traffic and all that jazz. That is extreme. London taxis, man, they do not mess about. <laughs> well, speaking of the fastest way to get to somewhere, Ardian yeah. on the attack. On the attack seat. And, uh, you know, there's a bit of London traffic here from Supreme, but uh, how can you cut through it? Good aggression, though, by Liberland. They don't want Ardian to completely run over them, so they're going to go for a wrap around here. Need to convert, though, in this moment as they do get Dayfly, but unfortunately Train. lose Deraten. And now picking Republic is good for them, but the pressure is still there from Ardian. Finally converting out Thorn Cuts mech. They need to get aggressive off that, though, but they're Ardian not able to members. get back in because Ardian, look, Ardian are losing members, but so are Liberland. No one's on the point. Did that just happen? And your fear, please. That'll be 20 pounds. 
Well, I'll tell you what, driver, you got me there fast. <laughs> Good knowledge. Plus it's set things. I want, I want someone to uh, take a, like, if someone find a promotional image of Artie and Please and just Photoshop cabbie hats onto there all of them. There are no promotional images. You can just screenshot them. Well, you can just like, take, like, take that shot from earlier with like, you know, with the six of them um, in front of their screens. I don't know. Or even just, I don't know, put, put a cabbie hat on Genji. I don't know. Someone so, get so on to this. A question. So here's a question. So, you know, what, what if you're a London cabbie driver that becomes an Uber driver? What if that just... Well, you, then you wouldn't do that because you're just hurting your own business. No, but what if you can make more as an Uber driver than a cabbie driver? Because, because you can't. That's the thing. That's that, the thing, yeah. Well, yeah. there it is. I mean, a, that, that because everything. that's the thing. Because it's more reliable than GPS, actually, they, uh, they it's a more premium service, and it's worth it's worth it. Is it's, it expensive? It, yeah. it sounds expensive. Yeah, it's pretty reasonable. Know. It's pretty reasonable, is the thing. Um, <sighs> And that's the thing, it's actually not as, uh, like, relative to Uber, it's not as expensive as taxis in a lot of other cities, which uh, yeah. Uber are really struggling in London. So, uh, there you go. But you've got to have the knowledge. You actually have to take an exam. You have to pass a, a set of exams in order to be a certified London cab driver. And I'm, I'm talking about the black cabs. Um, I can't remember if they... I, Is I, that what those were in the garage? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So, that so like, that, that's specifically a London cab. Like, how they've got the, the big red double-decker buses. Yeah. Like, they're quite an iconic vehicle in London, as are the, the black cabs. So, what I want to say about the King's Row map is the roads are so narrow. How do you get... How do the cabs operate there? I don't, I don't really see well, that Well, I mean, they, they hovered, so... And they were quite thin as well. each other? I don't know. The, that's the other thing, right? When you've got self-driving cars, like, does the car have to pass the exam? <laughs> I don't know. Well, you know, Liberal and Supreme are hovering above a loss now about to head into maybe the loser's bracket. They're going to have to take on uh, Talon down there if things keep going the way they are. Map 3 will be coming up pretty soon. Still, Liberal and Supreme's picket will be assault, and that's all happening after this break. Back to the Overwatch Pacific Championship Season 2. Qualifiers are about to head into what could be the final map now for Liberal and Supreme on their final legs and could be dropping into the lower bracket after this against Talon, who, yeah. by the way, just a little bit of a tidbit, Talon dropped 0-3 to Team Ardian on the way here in the online qualifiers. So yeah. that, that already hadn't happened. So Ardian already 0-3, Talon, we've seen Talon, and look, they're not bad. Talon mm -hmm, are quite mm -hmm. good. They put up an extremely good fight against Jitna and Korea, who I would say only barely scraped on through themselves. So the fact that those two teams were very close themselves, Ardian 0-3, Talon about to possibly 0-3 Supreme as well. Ardian just do look unstoppable. And that's the thing, right? Ardian 3 owing their way through the uh, online, online portion yeah. of this, and now 2-0 looking, excuse me, on the cusp of that same 3-0 yeah. against Libelin. Look, it's rough. It's rough, but we're going to go to Hanamura, so that is Libelin Supreme's pick as the still losing team. I'm actually really enjoying, I quite yeah. enjoy the, the sort of, uh, if you lose, you get to pick the map. It's, it's kind of the it makes you feel fight. not quite as bad for the losers. Actually, it's, it's really, um, it's, it's just right at home for, I think, Ardient, who are, are very used to this kind of a format. Yeah. Speaking of right at home, uh, of course, yeah. Linda's going to Hanamura, so uh, there you go. And they might be going to the real Hanamura if they don't make it to the OPC, so... Ooh, uh, yeah, they, they could actually, this is the thing, they are now very close to being sent packing, because that's exactly it, right? If they drop this, they are down into that loser's bracket, they do have to beat Talon to just keep their hopes alive, because actually the winner of that loser's bracket match goes on to play the loser of the winner's bracket match. So, I mean, naturally, that's how yeah. Double Elim works, and... Right now, that winner's bracket match is looking pretty poised to be Detonator Korea versus Ardian. So, either you're going to come up against a team who beat you, or you're going to come up against a team who beat Talon if you are Libelant in that situation. So, essentially, the way the tournament works is, and it's unfortunate to say this, but it does feel like you're playing for the second place. Ardian look like a team that, I would say at this point, it would be impossible for them to not go on through to Season 2. However, for every other team to make it to Season 2, Ardian already there, you have to be second after Ardian. So, for both Liberal and Supreme and Talon, the goal is to beat Detonator Korea here, who are the next favourites. So, if you can beat Detonator Korea, you can scrape on through as a second seed, moving into Season 2. Absolutely a real possibility, you are quite right. And, uh, you know, once again, that is looking to be very, very difficult. I mean, you know... Level and Supreme is one thing because they don't really know where they stand against Detonator Korea, but certainly for Talon that would be quite a scary thought because uh, yeah. odds are, if you can even beat Liberland, you do will, you do will, you would actually have to rematch the team that knocked you into the loser's bracket. That is always a tough situation, but I'll be honest, that's just tournaments for you. That happens often enough that, you know, we see turnarounds and all that jazz. It is a very real thing yeah. that happens consistently and enough. This is all just projecting. And the other thing is, Talon have already come close enough to beating the Detonator Korea that 
maybe if Helen faced them again, that would be the case, but we're not there quite yet. It's still Liberal and Supreme versus Ardient now, and it will also be Ardient attacking first. Yeah, this is uh, a little bit more conventional, often uh, opting to go into the defense. And by the way, the reason the screen is Four health. Yeah, wow. Uh, but barely getting out there. The reason the screen is blurry, by the way, is what you're about to see is not safe for television. Oh, I, speak I thought I took the, off my glasses. And it's also that is bad. the exact aggression right there. Liberal and Supreme getting picked to bits. Now, even Dayfly is doing work on the side. I don't believe this. Ardian absolutely steamrolled through the first point. There he goes, my glasses are back on. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. It's funny, I can see better when you put your glasses on. <laughs> I have that effect on people. <laughs> now it's just cleaning up the last few members who aren't even really in position to contest the point itself. Just kind of gives a bit more ult charge to Ardian who are now looking, uh, honestly, if anything, a bit short of ultimates to steamroll and snowball into the second point. <laughs> when that feel, when you win so quick, you don't even get the ultimates on your side. But actual Ursa is switching as well, so he drops his entire infrasight ultimate, which is going to do you know some things and not going to do a lot more other things. So Ardian, I'm absolutely right. They're not going to snowball as hard, but how much is the Assault Defender's advantage gonna, gonna favor Supreme here? Can they win a really decent fight and stabilize? Well, already picking off Pepper, and now Diritin. This Otate. is looking Alt. absolutely massive. DM sticking out, and they're just dropping one by one. Yeah, Hotada, he could ult, sure, but what's he gonna get with it? He's gonna be blocked up by a D.Va, bumped back by a Winston. Oh, <laughs> well. Do we have a new world rook killed? I don't think no, we No, no, I don't think we did because of that first point. That did actually cross my mind. I was like, you know, they could actually just take Blank's record, like right now, like speaking, <laughs> speaking of speed runs, but they didn't actually get the first point quickly enough. I so think that's, quite, uh, I think, quite, yeah. I think I'd be quite disappointed if you're Ardian. I, I don't know, Ardian should have been messaged before this and just said like, hey, if we go to Hanamura, by the way, try and get this world <laughs> record, try and take it off Blank. Because look, Blank didn't win the OBC, it, but they did get a world record and Ardian almost just took that off them as well. That yeah, can you, a can real you heartbreaker. That, uh, no, 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 no. Like, less <laughs> In a week as well, because that also this is mine. Thank you, Blake. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that, those playoffs only just happened like this weekend, just been. That would be, uh, yeah, wow, that would be really, really rough. But you know what? They're actually going to hold on to that. But uh, hey, you know what? Maybe Livalent take it off them. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, if we go into time bank, they get an opportunity to do it again. Oh my. So right we now, Blake, look, <laughs> Blake are not out of the woods yet. That's what we can take away so, from this. <laughs> This is the crazy thing because we're on the map now and the game mode as well where defensively, if you're on the second cap and you've got your full team, which Supreme did, even if you lose members there, that's the best possible place in, I would say, the entire... <laughs> <laughs> Ow, ooh, oh my goodness. Wow, that ragdoll was That was brutal. Okay. Um, oh. um, anyway, what was I trying to say? I was trying to mention that that is the best place... <laughs> to get a good defensive hold and also to actually win I'm sorry, win I'm so distracted. That was horrific. How are you, how can you keep talking? Yeah, I, I just witnessed a man drop to I, his I, death. I'll, yeah, I'll get to that. I'll get to the man <laughs> dropping to his death, but it's just incredible that Liberal and Supreme, even after being in the best possible defensive situation, where by the way, the snowballing attacking team doesn't even have ults to snowball with. You couldn't have asked for, a, I, I guess, a better situation other than that, um, being if you had six ultimates and the attacking team just had zero, right? Like it's just, <laughs> That's as good as it gets on defense. And I'm loving these wipes, by the way, brought to you from a galaxy far, far away. Yeah, thank you, George Lucas, for that. <laughs> jo hey, it's George from the Overwatch team. Yeah. Now, Level and Supreme have to uh, crack the tough turtle of Ardient. Let's see how they fare. They're not quite getting beaten back quite so resoundingly, so they are uh, at least having an opportunity to kind of crack ooh. into this one. But, oh dear, Otate a little bit low. cut off from his team now as Deriton uh, also getting picked out as well without the healers there. And uh, Celine, you can just see there, uh, experiencing tranquility. Uh, right, well, not experiencing tranquility. I don't know, he's, um, what would that be? True self was without form, that's what that is. <laughs> All right, well, we got that. You know Zenyatta has the most animation wipes in Overwatch? Is that true? Yeah. What do you mean by animation wipes? Um, so like it's a trick in animation where if you want to make it seem like something is moving fast, you actually draw a frame um, where the the thing is like it's like kind of smeared. Sorry, smeared is the term where it's like 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 the actual face, for example, if it's a head turning, is actually smeared and is wider than normal, so it looks like it's turning quickly. Oh, there we go. Lessons with Pixie. Look up animation smears, and you'll see what I mean. Like in a lot of old school cartoons. I always learn a lot. Always learn yeah. a lot here. I'm an entertaining guy, but yeah, he has the most because of his arms. Uh, but in any case, now Pepper getting aggressive, throwing down that pulse bomb, but not finding much for it as the rest of the team kind of drops down behind him. And Ardian keeping this on absolute lockdown. In fact, this is beyond lockdown. This is like 
This is already a maximum security prison, and recess just got cut this off. This is early. like uh, this is like the Red Sun prison where you contain Superman. <laughs> that's about as locked down. I think that's as locked down as you can possibly get. Yeah, or like that one in um, if anyone watched the Ava uh, the Legend of Korra, and like the, there's like those those four. Uh, Bender's who are like the most powerful in the world and they're each in like this overly specific and complicated prison and that's the only way they can be contained but here we go gonna have to bust out the transcendence here experiencing tranquility on the daily Selene but they're not converting the kills off the back of it as they throw in the sound barrier as well and uh they do finally uh, pick off Dayfly and DM, and now Earth are a little bit too deep, so at long right, last, right. Lord and Supreme That's have kills. found themselves in opening. There's a lot more than kills, actually, as they pressure out Thorn Cut's mech. He will be able to commit the self-destruct, but actually he doesn't. He holds onto it, and I think that's smart. They understand that this point is as good as gone. They might as well hold that for second point defense, because they have already run down a lot of the Okay, clock. well, we got a game here, because Liberal and Supreme actually sitting on a decent number of vaults. They're sitting a far more ultimates than Ardeon, and in fact, Animo switches off, so he even loses the progress towards that Molten core and Arya are going to have to go for a pretty decent reset. Ursa changed as well. They're only sitting on two ultimates. Nothing here can really stall out very well. The nano boost should go on to Republic, but going up against four ultimates, Liberty and Supreme are set up. Man, I love the new season of Prison Break. So full of twists. Now is Pepper looking to get aggressive? And actually, Ardian's a little bit separated here, so if uh, Liberlin just kind of booked for the point here, they can actually kind of catch them with their pants around their ankles. They're a little bit split up, but unfortunately it's Selene who dies on his way to the point. Republic a little low, but he's staying alive. That's what really counts here. And now Liberlin's uh, fast going to be a little bit short on members here. Is they're actually the ones uh, struggling to stay grouped. They're going to have to go for a retreat. He did indeed. I'm not sure what's going on there, but they get beaten back without really having a fight at all. Well, I mean, Republic got nanoed, and that was about all Ardian did. They just they use that as their one tool. And Liberland Supreme with four ultimates used the primal race and just said, We're out of here. They don't even want to fight against that. I was so they just blocked. surprised. It's almost what it was like, oh, we've got more ults where that came from, even though they totally did it. Now actually they do have some ults available. Yeah, now they this Dragon Blade, yeah. You bluff your last hand, yeah, and yeah. now you actually do have a pocket. And this time they're gonna be like, nah, I'm gonna call your bluff. And actually they do pick off DM, so here we go. This is gonna mean they have to commit more of those ultimates that they do have. They commit them into sound barrier, though. Ursa's not really finding anything. Finally gonna get in this one, but what? Oh, Thorn Cut. Cut you Never mind. Whole APC. <laughs> OPC. Rather. Ursa actually had to dodge, but the reason he didn't get anything there was, um... No, I thought Jasper used self-destruct, but apparently no, no, not. No, he didn't. It was actually Thorncut self-destruct. Ursa was just, he was just yeah, he, like... he's scared of his own He was just bamboozling us all. <laughs> He just finds D.Va really spooky. All right, there it is. So look, with that actually, Ardian have exhausted their ultimates. The only thing they're really gonna have is a nano boost and also a primal range in a moment, but that means Livelin have a window. We need to actually see if they can really make use of it though. Oh, you do, but it's not really a, a, you don't have a big enough advantage. If you're an attacking team, you need a lot. Usually you need a lot. You're going up against Ardian, you need more than a lot, so I don't know. And it's the entire team standing up here, but they don't seem to be able to respond to just Urston Republic diving in. Now Ursa finally trying to put damage onto Urston. He should die, but he still oh, actually has man. it. He's gonna slip out of that one. Like, what is Liberland shooting at? That is all of a their matrix. members. A Matrix is what they were shooting at, unfortunately. Well played by Thorncut to really keep his teammates alive there. So even the small things for Supreme that they should be getting advantage of. Stuff like killing an Ursa who was well overextended. Ursa should not have been there. They couldn't secure that one. Just, uh, It's just a bad place to be. It's it's like, I don't know, he's like a slippery bar of soap and they're just, no one can quite get their hands. Yeah, yeah. Swings a sword it's like at you. the whole team is constantly trying to grab the soap. It's just slipping out of their hands, go like whoop, 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 whoop. No one can get their hands. And then it like smacks someone in the eye and knocks them out. Also the sword can, also the, the soap can wield. The soap sword. has a sword. Yeah, yeah that's, that's. <laughs> Japan oh, is Japan hardcore. Is <laughs> Damn, Japan, Even the, you're scary. Yeah. <laughs> well, cause, okay, this is in in uh, in the Japanese military. Um, I, I, it may not be the case now, but in in um, World War Two, everyone actually had to have uh, a katana. Well, maybe not specifically a katana, but you, you had a, a sword. sword. Um, you had to have a sword, uh, and that was like just standard issue. So like it, maybe maybe the soap had swords as well if it was like military yeah, soap. Standard I don't know. issue. <laughs> cleaning whatever's from your supermarket, yeah. well, I don't know. Well now let's see if they can actually wield that sword well enough to crack open this point here, fighting through a sound barrier, and Pepper is struggling. They can wait, they can play patient, this is good. They good start. It is indeed good, they've got the ultimates and now they want to try and get aggressive with them, but Selene already picked off. It's like they're just getting out aggressed, they don't seem to have the target selection as Artie and just pick them to bits, they're splitting them up constantly. I mean, one of these teams has clearly read the art of war. And Liberal and Supreme as well, they had a lot going for them. They had the Nano, I believe, onto Hotate, who didn't use 
the he didn't use his attack visor. Maybe he didn't have a good situation to use it, which is also understandable because the Republic was in his face the entire time. Probably a good idea to save it if that was the case. But also Darton, he just uses primal rage straight away. Usually in a primal rage situation, you want to have already been quite low, or you know you're trying to stall out something. Um, or, you know, in, in a most extreme case, you just found a kill that you really wanted to secure that you couldn't do normally in your normal form. But, uh, I don't know, Darrington kind of gave that away for Living Supreme. They just got split apart, took down. And now again, Republic is the one diving, and it's just so safe doing it. This is going to force the ultimate out of Jasper just to make space, but it's not found anything else. They haven't really capitalized off that space either, because they're getting pushed back as Pepper gets picked off. This is... This is just absolute destruction from Ardient. It's, it's like... I'll be honest, it's not even Level and Supreme doing anything particularly wrong, except for failing to react to what Ardian are doing. And what Ardian are doing is just going so aggressive that Level and are too afraid to group up and actually deal with what's ahead of them. They're so concerned with running away from it, they're not even shooting back. Yeah, it's like, you know, you're reloading a gun, you're just dropping all the bullets, and I don't know, it's a... Uh, it's getting shot while you're doing it as well. Ardian are now sitting on more ultimates. You got the world's and... clumsiest cowboy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hold on, hold on. Excuse me. <laughs> Can we... Oh my, wa new, right? my watch is a little slow. <laughs> <laughs> Pepper getting aggressive though. Funny able to pick one up on Bayfly to quick it off. And finally they learn how okay, to shoot at yep, Earth. There we go. This is what they've been after now. Republic has already altered. But oh wow, there we go. That's what they need. Converting them through onto the last few. The self-destruct, it doesn't find anything. That is so crucial. They won't be able to stop them covering getting back into the mech. But for now that's all right because they are at least on the point. Like one third up. They are indeed looking to get a third use. They the take off the last few members. Now, Soundberry to get these few members from Ardient onto the point. But at least Hotati set up on this high ground can keep running the pressure on as Republic has to die for him. He makes it happen with DM down the side as well. The sleep connecting to DM a little bit too late. But it does at least give them breathing room on the point itself. They have got the third. Indeed a Boostio. Why not? Level and Supreme need to be careful not to get picked apart once again. They need to keep this pressure on the members of Ardient as they trickle onto the point. They need to give them the respect they deserve. This is as is what's happening. They pick off Ursta. Doable indeed. Pulse Bomb does go wide, but they've separated off Thorncut from his team now as the second Tank Republic only just getting back on. Actually, Thorncut able to retreat to a health pack, but while that's happening, they train down Republic. He does pick off Selene, but they're at least keeping members down and locked out of this oh, one. Nice oh, nice Thorncut continually healing up. Great, yeah, Bio Grenade. This is so down to the wire, but it does look like Ardian are finally going to beat back the fire and Level and Supreme once again may just fall short of the mark. I don't believe it. The heartbreak is real, and Ardian are just going to smack the Japanese squad down to the lower bracket. To be honest, that was a really well fought uh, display from Level and Supreme. This map in particular, Hanamura, has been their best showing. They got the first cap, which by all means was a little bit of a surprise because, look, Ardian held on so well for the longest amount of time on cap number A, and then somehow they just loosen the grip a little bit, and as soon as you loosen that grip, I mean, the rest of Supreme just rolling through. This should be that triple kill from Thorncut as well, uh, while Ursa was hiding onto the side, so there it is, even just gets bumped on the side, but ouch, oh. what a massive take. I mean, but it was, a bit, yeah. it was still a good overall, this entire map, despite all the obvious hiccups from Supreme, they had the best showing. Yeah, we actually did see what Level and Supreme are capable of. It could actually just be, in fact, it is almost certain that Ardient are really just the best team in this qualifier out and out, and the sort that will push for top three in OPC season yeah. two. That is what this is looking like. So don't take this as you know something to Level and's detriment, because like I said, we saw what they're capable of, and it actually was a lot. That was very, very solid. Look, I'll be honest, once they weren't so paralyzed by fear, they looked clean. They were actually coordinated well. They had the, I mean, the aim, frankly. They were actually fragging correctly. They were executing well. And that's what they're going to carry into their match against Talon in the loser's bracket. And that's going to be an interesting one as well because Talon are also a very kind of, I would say, aggressive team. They, they definitely are always in your face. The DPSs are, you know, absolutely running into you the whole time. And that's kind of Ardeon's play, so at least against Liberal Supreme, at least what we saw today. I don't want to say this is conclusive of all that Ardeon are capable of. Surely, to be quite honest, they weren't pushed here. So what would Ardeon do if, if they were really pushed? That's, that's another question, and Ardian as a team that actually gets pushed, you may see them sort of adapt to something else, and then, then you really mm -hmm. get to see the broadness of what the team really has to offer. So yeah. actually, 
the, the, the biggest takeaway is for both teams, we haven't seen the true potential. Yeah, we've really just not seen enough. You're quite right. I would argue a similar thing is true of Detonator Korea and Talon as well. As much as we saw a little bit more, we saw one more yeah. game than what we saw here uh, with these two teams. But look, still a lot of questions about everything coming up ahead. And actually, the next match we will have is going to be Libelant taking on Talon in the losers bracket. Yep, absolutely. We're not going to get into any of the winners' side today. We will not see a single team actually qualify into season two but we will we'll see, see at least we'll see home. one team unfortunately fall out of the qualifying those two teams it'll, it'll be between liberal and supreme and talon esports and that's all going to happen after a break so when we come back the losers bracket one team goes home one team continues we'll find out what happens after this